Mark chapter 9, verse 38. <clears throat> and John answered, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he does not attend our church, and we forbade him because he followed us not in our church. That's what they would say today. You didn't go to our church. They don't go to our church. How great our church is. And it's funny because, you know, I've been in church and, you know, bite them to Sunday. Why not, if you're going to do that aspect and you deal with your coworker people, why don't you say, hey, why don't you find the closest King James Bible believing church to your houses and I will come with you and sit with you in the church? Because your pastor would be afraid you might find a church that has more doctrine than what they have. John answered said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. So the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He followed us not. And we forbade him because he followed not, not us. You know, he's not one of our disciples. He's not one of our followers. So we told him not get off. But Jesus said, and here's a but, forbade him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. And there's another aspect we have in the church today, you know, which, which I've seen since I've been saved in 1987, is, well, you know, we, we, we go door knocking. That's the means of salvation. That's the visitation. Well, you know, I, I, I street preach. And I had people come to me, oh, you think just because, you know, street preach, you think that's the only way. No, it's not. There are many ways as long as it's the gospel and you're trying to lead the lost people to Jesus, the correct biblical way, whether you go knocking on doors, whether you stand on the street corner, whether you preach on the streets, whether you go to jail ministry, whether you go inside the school, whether you become a missionary, whether you do it in the Sunday school classroom, whether you do it in the pulpit of a church, whether you do it on the side, wherever, whatever. You open up the King James Bible to your co-workers. You, 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 you leave, you know, bumper stickers on your car. You send emails. You send letters. Out. Whatever it is, it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you are going to hell. Amen. I've met many people in our street ministry. And, you know, I remember calling one woman. Yeah, uh, because I, but she goes into the buildings and she leaves chick tracks. Oh, she don't preach on the streets, so what? She don't go to my Baptist church, so what? Not every farmer that sows the seed is a corn farmer or a green bean or a tomato or a potato. You don't have the only means, the only church, the only pastor, and you don't have the only means, the only ways of, of so winning. It's that simple. Your night of visitation may not be another church's visitation night. If it's purely for Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, then Jesus says, hey, let it alone. There's only one thing that Paul says is, the fact is, I'll use, we're not there no more because of my health, but all right, the Daytona uh, street ministry that we had in, in Daytona Beach, Florida. All right, the Lord gave us that ground. Don't be part of a church and come over and take over our ground. Paul rebuked that. Now, we worked with other ministries, other churches on places where they were, and I sought the permission of the pastor of that church and the person that was in charge. They said, listen, can me and my family be there to help? But then again, my street ministry, my public ministry is not about a church. It's about Jesus. So if you're going to set forth the standard that our church is the only church, our pastor is the only pastor. 
our way of witnessing is the only means of witnessing. What we do is the thing we do. That's it. You're wrong. You're wrong. Listen, even the Catholics today are having a VBS. There's nothing wrong with that. Is VBS wrong? Not if it outsides itself from the Bible. If you spend more minutes on everything that involves in the VBS rather than the Bible, yes, it's wrong. You give more time to the Bible. You give more time to the gospel of Jesus Christ, showing those children that the means of the gospel, why you need to be saved. Okay. But as far as the VBS is, I've seen the face paint, the clown, the, the outdoors, the little, little bow and all that, and then five minutes of a Bible and handing out perverted Bibles. That don't work. You see, the thing is that Paul tells us there is another gospel, there is another Jesus, and there's another spirit. Now, they are in the spirit. They are in the biblical Jesus. They are in the biblical gospel. Okay, fine. That's your three gowns. I've come across many people in the ministry doing a part in the ministry. I've gone and shook their hands and said, I'm glad you guys do it. Not people for me. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. I've had that happen several times. Because he belonged to Christ. I've had that happen. For I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Now, granted to the fact is, we are in the Gospels. We're not on this side of Calvary. But I would assume that if somebody helps you in your ministry as far as much of a cup of cold water. Now listen, I've got more than a cup of cold water. I've had at times, I've had somebody give us gospel tracts that we were able, that were correct, that give out to people. Well, Jesus said, I'm the water of life. I've had someone offer me a sandwich. And these people, I had people offer me money, which I outright reject, because I don't want, well, look, he's doing it for the money. I, I, I outright reject that. But if they're doing it for Jesus. They're doing it for your Savior, their Savior. Let them. But as for me, again, we're not the same. I would not take any money. Even if they, hey, listen, buy some more gospel tracks. I, I want it because I don't want people seeing me in the street. Well, look, yeah, he's taking money. And we're, we are here in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we have a problem with panhandling. We have signs here, don't hand to the panhandlers. I don't want to be misconsidered, misfigured. He's a panhandling preacher. I don't want that. That's why I, somebody else, somewhere else, they might accept the money. They might put a hat in the ground for you to put some money in. Yes. I'm not going to say yes. I'm not going to say no. As far as the ministry in Daytona Beach, I would not do it. Don't refuse that water. Because if they are a Christian, and they're saying, listen, the only thing I can do is I can give them a cup of water. I can give them a soda or maybe a coffee, whatever. Whatever I can give them, a sandwich or give them gospel. They are doing it. And they, if you don't take it, you are stealing from them from a reward. Again, like I said, somebody wants to offer us money. I will explain to them fully right why I don't take cash. Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, so there's children there, that believe in me. There's, there's the key. There it is. Believe in me. All right, you take these VBSs. You, you take these children, youth groups. And what are they believing? That's the question. Because there's all kinds of things they can believe. 
they can believe in the big fat giraffe. They can believe in the in Tommy the dinosaur. They can believe their team is the, the greatest team. They can believe they can get the most Tootsie Roll. They can believe anything. But Jesus said, believe in me. I said earlier, I said the Catholic Church, among other religions, denominations out there, have a VBS. Well, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in Jesus Christ. They're going to somehow get that child, get those children to receive a wafer. It is better for that, for him, that a millstone, that's a big heavy stone that ground up uh, the wheat and all that to make the flour, were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. That's death. <laughs> if there's one thing you can get even today in the church, eh, don't offend the children. And with the heresies and the fooling around and the entertainment and the foolishness that is in the land of the sea in church, eh, we are offending the little ones. Talking vegetables. Uh, and listen, it may sound great. It may sound great. And it could be wrong. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. But, you know, you got Patch the Pirate. Pirate is not a a a a. a, a occupation that would associate itself with Christianity. Now, I'm sorry the guy got the cancer. I'm sorry the guy is wearing a patch. But that moment that child gave you know, you're a patch and he called himself the pirate, you're in trouble. Because that is the wrong occupation. It is just sorry that what goes on in these churches in the name of children. I just read the other day that there's, there's a well-known church, and I think it's gift certificates or, or, or discount coupons for, for area you know grocery stores and restaurants and all kinds of that for their youth group. Really? That's what the Boy Scouts do. That's what the Girl Scouts do. Really? Some of them, you know, we're, we're going to have a teen, teen car wash at our church. Really? That's what the football team does. And they get half-naked girls to stand out, you know, teenage girls. You can stand out there half-naked and hold up the sign in car wash. Well, you know, our girls, they dress right. And you get all wet. The car wash is the means of the world. You're not going to lead the children to Jesus by the means of the world. And you're using the world to bring Jesus to them. You're not doing it. You're offending them. If Thy right, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Now that's not church age doctrine. No Christian is told to poke out your eyeball, cut off your hand, or cut off your foot because of sin. We are still in the Old Testament. You know what would have done David very good? That would saved him a lifeline of trouble. He would have should have poked his eyeballs out. He say, how cruel. Look what happened to his life. Solomon should have poked his eyeballs out. Look at the mess he got himself into. I can't say his name. Jeroboam. He had been better to cut his hands off than make those golden calves. Those golden calves survived from the, from the first time that Israel became a nation north all the way to taken into captivity. You kept on the sins that Jeroboam made Israel a sin. The, Jer the sins that made Jerobo Jeroboam made to make Israel a sin. The sin that Jeroboam, that was the golden calf. That stayed all the way. You better cut off his hands. Now, don't do that as a Christian today. What do you do as a Christian? You got sin. You, you go to the Lord. You confess your sins. 
and you, you plead the blood and you fight the flesh, you put the armor, I'm going to fight my armor, I'm going to fight the devil, I'm going to get all smutty face, and you got a problem with your own flesh. You need, if you got a problem with pornography, you don't go by that book section. You don't turn off the computer. Get rid of television set. You got a problem with booze and all that. Don't go near the bar joint. Don't go near the alcohol section. Don't. Don't watch the football or the baseball game because they're going to advertise it. Don't look at what, what's going on with Bud Light and all that right now. That just gets you. We're in the Old Testament right now, still in the Gospels. And listen, if, if you died in your sins in the Old Testament and you went to hell, it'd be better in this point before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You, you, you remove that body part that gave you a hard time now, but under the church age, you fight the flesh. You confess your sins. He is faithful and just to, to forgive and to cleanse you. If thy hand... But, Take it to the church would be, look how serious it would be for God to say what he's going to say. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. There are nations in America who say it's cruel, and, and the, 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 the situation ethics would say it's cruel. There are nations, if you were caught shoplifting, every time you did, you missed a finger. By the time you got to the ten-finger distance, it you couldn't steal no more. You you, you go in there and, and, and you apply for a job. You put your hands on the desk. The guy looks at uh, you're missing eight fingers. You, it's hard to explain that. We had it was a long time ago. I forget how long ago. But there was a kid that went and uh, graffitied on the wall. And, and the nation caned him. And America got all upset. We need to take that nation and bring them to America. America got all upset. Oh, how cruel. They came the kids behind and all that. Oh, it was so wicked. And look what your children are doing today. Bible says, use the rod. It shouldn't be the government. It should be the parent. When the government has to step in, Romans 13, and Americans got all upset, America and the Christian nation, you violated Romans 13. You violated Proverbs where it says you were to chastise your child. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. That's how serious it is. It is better for thee to enter into life, main, than having two hands and go into, uh oh, Jesus preached about hell. Now in the Old Testament, Old Testament, you can die in your sins and go to hell. In the Old Testament, it would be better you cut that hand off. Cut that other hand off. In the Old Testament, not the church age. Don't do it today. You know it would be well in the tribulation period? Cut off that hand. You are, if you are tempted to receive that mark in your right hand, you better remove it. You say, well, if I'm going to receive it in my forehead, then you go better go get yourself beheaded. And there's only one way to get yourself beheaded. Follow Christ, do right, and the Antichrist will take care of that for you. Again, I'm not saying church age. Church age, you, you, you confess your sin, you put the armor of God in, you go in the power of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God, and the power of Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit praying for you. If you really, seriously want to give up that sin. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. So hell is hell fire. The first hell fire preacher is Jesus Christ. Don't tell me there's no hell. If you say there's no hell at the Jehovah Witnesses, you are saying, Jesus, you're a liar. Listen, Jesus said God created hell for the devil and his angels. Jesus is God. The, the Jehovah Witnesses deny that. Jesus is telling you about the place that he made. He said that fire won't go out. He moved the lake of fire. The Bible says death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. 
You will have firefighters, firemen, and firewomen in hell. They won't put out that fire. There's no fire extinguisher. There's no fire exit. And there's no fire alarm system. There's no sprinkler system. And there's no fire hydrants. There's no water. Where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. Now that worm's interest, we're not going to get into it tonight. I could, but I'm not going to. But if you were to look at a microscope image of the male seed that begins life in a woman, I don't care what scientists and religions say today, but you, you take a look at that sperm under a microscope and it looks like a worm. That worm, whatever it is, maybe you are Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies, the devil. The Lord of the Flies, that's Beelzebub. He's, he's the, the dominion of, of fly. Maybe you become a maggot. You are some kind of worm. You don't have a human body in hell. You, He says, where the worm died or not. Maybe you become a maggot. Maybe you become the, that smallest thing that actually became human life, sperm. Maybe in the lake of fire, you're squirming and curving like little maggots do when you lift that garbage can and there they are. But, you, but that's it. I mean, you don't die. You, you don't disintegrate. You just burn, and the fire is not quite. You just burn. You just burn. You know, it's so funny. I, today I was looking at something, I don't and I happened to see the fire triangle. The fire triangle is, in order to have fire, is you got to have a spark. you got to have heat. you got to have oxygen. Well, hell is fire, Jesus just said. Everywhere he speaks about hell and fire, it's called fire. There is nothing but fire. You're breathing. God breathed into man. Man became a living soul. You are a soul in hell. You are breathing flames and fire. And that fire is just fleed by air and heat. If thy foot offend thee, hands as you touch something that you're not supposed to be touching. If thy foot, you go somewhere where you're not supposed to be going. Cut it off. Eat too much food. You're a glutton. You eat too much sugar. The amputation. It's better for thee to enter into halt, limping, into life. That having two feet and to be cast into hell again, we're, we're in the Gospels, we're in the Old Testament. The second time, the fire that never shall be quenched. The second time, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. You know, the Bible speaks about Satan. He's the, the old serpent. Serpent, worm. Slithering, sliving, mostly hated by your proper people. And when they see a, a snake, ugh, women don't like to see a snake or a worm. How would you like to be one? If thy eye offend you, you're looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. The internet. You're coveting. Pluck it out. Like I said, David would have done best for that. He saw a, a, a woman. You know what Eve should have done? She should have poked her eyeballs out because she saw the tree was good for food. Pluck it out. For it's better for thee to enter, now look at this, the kingdom of God. That's the millennium. You're in a time and period, not only do you go to hell, but in this period, we're not the church age, we're in the Old Testament, and it would be also for the tribulation period. If you have sinned a sin and you end up in hell, you're not coming out of hell to go into to Christ's kingdom, the kingdom of God. 
All those kings of Israel that did wicked, they're not going to be in the millennium. David, I believe Jehoshaphat was one of them. Asa was another one of them. But then again, Asa, when he died, I don't know. I don't know. That's the Old Testament. I don't know. You're not going to see Cain in the kingdom of God. Go with one eye. Now he said it'd be better for for one hand into life. Better to have one foot go into life. He says one eye in the kingdom of God. Now this is this is the thing. Is that literal or is it figurative? Because it can be too. If you are at a point now, you are listening to Jesus, and let's say you are involved with a sin with the eye, and let's say you poke your eye out because you want to be right with God, and you end up right with God, you die right in God, you end up in the millennium, is your eye gone? Or is Jesus given an example? Then having two eyes be cast into hell fire. This is how serious hell is. Better to remove offending body part. Now let's go back before we finish. It'd be better. Verse 42, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me is better for him for a millstone be hanged about his neck and if it were cast into hell. And how serious God teach the children that believe. And don't just think seven, eight year olds and nine year olds. You could be 52 years old. You could be 92 years old. If you believe on Jesus, woe be to the Jehovah Witness come. Somebody in our family had got associated with Jehovah Witness. And my son, who, who was in prison, said those Jehovah Witnesses sent him information. And they got on his, his, his uh, you got to be on the list to contact him. I'm on his list. They got on his contact list, and they were going back and forth. And my son blew him out of the water. And once he won the battle, and they, they're no longer on his list. Shame on Jehovah Witnesses if any child of God you remove to a doctrine where Jesus is not God and hell is the only grave or a Catholic church what they teach or the Mormons what they teach or a Baptist church and what the Baptist church is teaching today. You better not hold that, that, that person to the fact is you know there's a possibility if I go to Cincinnati, I have a great opportunity. And, you know, I looked and I saw there's a King James Bible-believing church, and, and I can afford it, and, and the things I can do for the career and maybe my family, but if I leave this godly church, God will be mad at me. Friend, that's the doctrine of the Catholic Church. If, if, if you know, if you're not married at the altar of the, of, of the Catholic Church, if you don't die in the blessings of the Pope and the priest, if you're not buried in the Catholic cemetery, you are doomed. You will not go to heaven. You end up, you know, kissing the Pope's feet in purgatory for an entire life. Oh, listen, I know Baptists who have been saved. They're born again, Bible believing. Christian, they will not leave that church or it took them forever to leave that church because they were afraid of the dormant of the Nicolaitanism that was in the Catholic Church. If I leave the Catholic Church for the, for the Baptist Church, oh man, what's going to happen to me? I, I've been taught all these years that's the mother church. 
And you go to Baptist Church today in 2023, and they, that's the mother church. Welcome to God's house. Thank you, Lord God. We are in God's house today. Glory to God. You step up to this stage. No more an altar. This stage, and you pray to God from this stage. Oh, no, oh, now it's an altar. At the end of the service, it's an altar now. How many people have missed God's blessing because to be moved, to go somewhere, maybe be a missionary? Oh, if I leave this church, if I leave this pastor, I'm in trouble with God. If I don't do it this way of the church, I have met many people with the street ministry, and they come up and they talk, and they say, man, I am fascinated in what you're doing. I can't do it like that. I'm sorry. Like, oh, listen. You see these gospel tracts? Yeah. Can you pass them out? Yeah. Well, there's a ministry. Can you take an open Bible and show somebody the pages in the gospel? Yeah. Can you go start knocking on door, start with your neighbor's door and say, listen, I want to tell you about Jesus. Yeah. You don't have to get on the street corner and cry out loud. Can you send stuff in the mail? Yeah. See, you don't have to, to scream on the street corner. God didn't call everybody to scream on the street corner. But God did call us all to go preach the gospel. Well, it says preach. <laughs> You be talking to somebody at the lunch room at your job. You say, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and and, and there's hell. We don't believe. stop preaching at me. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking to you. I don't want to hear that preaching no more. You Bible thumper. You hellfire. I just was talking in my. I wasn't as yell as that guy on the street preaching. But you'd be accused of preaching. You see, the Baptist church gets you in a rut. You got to tithe Malachi. Why? Because I think the pastor's lost faith in God. And he looks at the bill like, oh, no, we got these bills due and we're not getting enough offerings. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have a Christmas for Jesus. We're going to have a birthday for Jesus. And, and here's our Christmas list because... We're running short. <laughs> and if we had to buy this stuff based upon what you put in the offering plate, oh. You know, you got, the, the biggest person you got to worry about are a newborn babe in Christ. Someone who just got saved. You know the most deadliest weapon against a newborn babe in Christ? A lukewarm Christian. It's not how you do it. Keep your mouth shut. Don't amen the service. Don't. You know how many times I've been told that? If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast in the third time. Hell. Fire. Show that to your liberal. Show that to your Jehovah Witness. By the way, their Bibles would say the grave. Um, I buried a grandpa. I buried a grandma. I buried a wife. Um, I've been to a friend's funeral. I've never seen... And we pass by a graveyard, and there's a funeral every Saturday. I've never seen flames shooting out of the ground. Never. I had Joe Wood and said, well, you know, hell is a grave. I thought, oh, man, why weren't you here last week? He goes, well, what was wrong? I said, I wish you told me this last week. Because why? I said, you know, I just, my aunt died, and we dug a hole, and we put her in hell. Oh, man. I should have hung her in the tree. Yeah, yeah. You want to untie your tongue now? For the third time, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So you take a worm, 
you throw it in the water, the lake of fire. But you're not going to catch any fish, be fishes of men, because once you enter into the lake of fire, once you enter now, you're not coming out. And then the Bible says in Revelation that, that Satan, the devil, is the great dragon. That's the class of lizards and worms and, and reptilians. And no Christian is a fish. For everyone shall be salted with fire. And this is back in Leviticus 2 or 3. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. And the, the law prescribed that God said, when you bring that sacrifice, put in salt. Don't listen to what the doctor said. Put in salt. Don't you neglect the salt in that sacrifice. Now your body. Now salt is good because in the proper proportions, you have too much salt, you're going to have heart trouble. You got too much salt, you're going to have health problems. You have too little salt. You're going to have health problems. You've got to have that balance. Salt is good for food. It's good for humans and for animals. Animals need a salt lick. It's good. It's used in soap. Very good for you to wash yourself. It's used in flux, in metal welding. That flux you use for soldering. That You can combine two or three metals together. It's good for the roads up north when it snows. They put rock salt on the, and it melts the, the ice and the snow so you can travel. It's also a water softener when your water is too hard. Also in the region that we are in right now, in the Bible is nomads would not eat salt with their meals if they had a diet of milk, of raw or baked animal meat. Because of that milk and that meat, not fried, not boiled, like Americans, roasted, you would get your salt from that meal as you needed. Salt was a commodity that it, it, it it said that the soldiers in Rome were paid by salt. There was a road in the Roman Empire that was paved to the salt mines. People needed salt. It, it, on, the, on, the, on the ships, or going out to the ships in the old shipping sailing, they, they would take salted meat, and that's how you preserved your meat. You salted it. You wouldn't need any extra salt in those times. Salt is in the, in the water, unable to be drunk, had to be separated. Submarines, nuclear submarines of, of, America, of the USA, they have it where they can take that water and they can take out the salt so they can have fresh drinking water. They can take that, that water, remove the salt, separate the hydrogen and the oxygen, and they can put oxygen in those subs. It says salt is good. Not too much. But if the salt have lost its saltiness, and I don't know if salt ever does. I know they found honey in, in the pyramids and they open it up and they stuck their finger or whatever they're doing. They, hey, this stuff is still good. They have found seeds in the same very same pyramid and they plant them in the ground and the crops came up. Where with will ye season? How are you going to make salt, salt, D, if it's lost the saltiness? Once it's bad, it's gone bad. Once you are cast into hell, we're not going to make you better. Don't give me purgatory. Don't give me, where, you know, if you pay money to your ancestors like, like the morons and all that. And all. No, 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 no. Once you enter into hell, this is the context. Once you are entering into hell, you lost your seizing. You lost your saltiness. Matthew says you are the salt of the earth. 
Do you have a value? Do you have a particular use of your saw? Saw is good for wounds. Uh, 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 Epsom saw is good for your body. Saw, it, it, you rub it in the wound, it says, ah! Ow! You go, it, we used to have, when we lived in Connecticut, and, and, you know, if you have a wound, you have a sore, you, you would go into the Thames River, which is salty, and you, ah, oh, oh, but it feels good. You would sit with Epsom salt, and sometimes it would burn, but it's good. I'm the burning kind of preacher. There are preachers out there that got salt, you know, and you bite it in. Wow, that's bland. Oh, let me give you a little salt. Ooh, that's good. And there are preachers like that. There are Sunday school teachers like that. There, there are preachers out there, evangelists and all that. You know what? The congregation's got icy. It's got snowy. It's got cold. You bring in the rock saw and it melts and you can travel the roads again. There are, there are, there are saw out there with a the congregation. They're flux. You bring the congregation back together again. Because we're supposed to be in unity. And what's wrong with VBF? We got a red team. We got a blue team. Why do we have competition in the church? We got the boys versus the girls. Why is there competition? Why are we battling this group and that group? Why are we fighting against the left group and the right group? That's the Catholic Church. That's not supposed to be the Baptist Church. We're supposed to be edifying. We're supposed to help each other. VBS teaches we got this team and we got that team. That's wrong. That's wrong. Well, I want to thank everybody who came out and to our church service and all. Maybe they couldn't come out. Did you offer to give a ride to everybody who couldn't give a ride? I want to thank everybody who came out to visitation. Uh, what, what if they couldn't come out? What if they're unable? What if their health prevented them? What? Yeah. Better be careful. Some people go out just so they can please the pastor. It's that quiet one, the one who's, who's in the ch quiet in the church, and they're sitting there, and they're praying for you. You don't even know it. Have salt in yourselves. Like I said, we're in a region, we're in an area where, where their salt was by their meat, not vegetarian. You were a vegetarian, you were in trouble. The nomads. Some people can't have the milk. Well, I hate to say it, raw piece, they would eat raw meat or they would eat roasted meat. You can't have milk. You get yourself a roasted goat or roast, because that was your salt. Because those animals had to have salt. They would have a salt lick. Have salt in yourself because if you don't have no salt in you, you've got an unhealthy body just as much as if you got too much salt. What it's saying, take care of yourself. Medium-fied your body. And what I mean by medium-fied, I mean don't have too little, don't have too much. You want to have chocolate? Have, go ahead. Don't have too much chocolate. You want to have cake? Okay. Don't have too much cake. Salt? Have just enough salt. Don't say, well, I'm not going to have no more salt. No, you're in trouble. I'm going to have a 40-day fast like Jesus did. You're in trouble. Have peace one with another. So inside yourself, keep yourself healthy. Keep yourself right. But with everybody else saved or lost, have peace. How can you have peace with VBS when you're trying to conquer the, this team with your team? How can you have peace? You get up there, and you got one person in your team, and, and they don't do so well, and you're mad at that, that person in your team because they lost it all for everybody. They got all the candy. They got all the balloon. And because of you and that one stupid error, you, the, your team lost it all. That's peace. That's the Christian atmosphere. That's what... Oh, I want to thank you, Lord. Now, here I want to thank you, Lord. Come, well, here we are in your church assembly right now, like we're the only church assembly ever to be in the world. We're the city on the 
on the hilltop. We are, uh, that's the temple in Jerusalem, my friend. We're not under the law. Oh, yes, you're trying to put them under the law. Why don't you shut up? You don't want them under the law? Okay. Then you run to Malachi. I drove my preacher mad with that. Right, well, are we under law? No. Well, you keep running to Malachi. Well, <laughs> You run the math. Listen, you look at your average Baptist church today. Give me a dollar for every time they say, open your Bible as a Matthew. And for every dollar I got, the church would come up and say, Malachi says you give 10 cents. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> hell is serious. Jesus said hell is serious. Now, don't go cutting off your eyeballs. Don't be cutting off your hands, cutting off your feet. We are not in that dispensation. Today, you repent, you confess to God alone, and you pray to God in the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit to get victory. I know you can because God has done it in my life. It's that simple.